So welcome all uh, to this uh, virtual computational biology seminar series. Today we have the pleasure to have um, Sylvain Pou from the Swiss Prod Group uh, at the CIP, Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Sylvain obtained his master and his PhD in biology at the University of Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, having gained a strong a wet lab research background, he decided to reorient his career to become a biocurator. This is how he joined SwissProt in 2002 and rapidly moved to protein biocuration in all biological fields. From 2006 um, to 2009, he and his team worked in defining the annotation rules that would ensure high quality of SwissProt entries. And since, since 2009, he is heading the annotation and integration department at SwissProt and is in charge of seven annotation programs. For those who don't know yet what is SwissProt, so UniProt, KB SwissProt is the most widely used protein information resource and uh, it's uh, over 800,000 requests per month. It, it provides a concise a uh, description of non-redundant set of hundreds of thousands of proteins and it's uh, the, fru the fruit of a high quality annotation done by manual expert curators. Um, so today uh, Sylvain will share with us what is the art of biocuration in Uniprot KB SwissProt. Sylvain, thank you again for accepting our invitation and the floor is yours. Thank you. So. I say today I will describe the procedure of biocreation, expert biocreation in Uniprot KB SwissProt. But first, why to talk about biocreation today? Last month, Geneva hosted the ninth uh, international biocreation conference, and this conference, which was organized by the SIB, provided a forum for curators and developers from different bi biological databases uh, around the world. More than 250 scientists um, attended to the conference. This conference didn't attend, um, took place in Switzerland by accident, because over the years Switzerland has played and is playing a leading role in the biocuration field. The SIB is providing a high number of important resources in terms of biocuration such as uh, ProSide, EPD, uh, BG, Nexprot, and the most important of these resources is clearly Uniprot KB SwissProt. This year we are celebrating the 30th uh, anniversary of SwissProt, which was uh, born in Geneva, and SwissProt uh, constitutes and represents the world's most comprehensive catalog of information of proteins. It is recognized as a gold standard reference by the scientific community. In 2002, the, uh, the, the SIB SwissProt group, group of Geneva, together with the U, uh, European Bioinformatics Institute uh, in UK and the Proteomics uh, Information Research in uh, the US joined together to fund the Uniprot Consortium, the Universal Protein Consortium. I will not describe, uh, Uniprot is composed of different databases for different users. I will not describe these different databases in detail today. I will concentrate on the knowledge base of Uniprot. It's uh, Uniprot KB which is composed of two sections. Trumbull, which is automatically annotated and unreviewed by curator, which means that information contained in the Trumbull entries are either submitted by the submitters or predicted by predictation tools or submitted or imported from another databases, from another resources. Uh, importantly, more and more Trumbull entries contain automatic annotation, which is derived from rules based on Uniprot KB SwissProt entries. And SwissProt, Uniprot KB SwissProt, which is the, 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 the review section of Uniprot, 
which means that in, in Swiss prod, every piece of information has been reviewed by a curator, by an expert curator. I will just cite several, uh, several uh, numbers for Swiss prod, just mentioned. So, Swiss prod contains more than 550,000 uh, proteins that have been expertly curated. It contains all protein coding genes for a number of key organisms like humans, Saccharomyces cerevisiae or Pombe, E. coli or Bacillus subtilis. It contains information extracted from more than 2,100 publications uh, indexed in PubMed. And around 50 biocurators currently work for the SwissProd database. Most of them work at the, at the SIB SwissProd group in Geneva. And the, the SwissProd group in Geneva probably constitute the largest group of biocurators worldwide. What do biocurators do? They read, read, read. They read unwritten publication, synthesize the information, and integrate this information in Swiss Prot entries. Just to give a number, last year we manually and expertly curated more than 8,000 publications indexed in PubMed. Most biocurations have a very strong background in the wet lab research and are experienced biologists and biochemists. What can we find in a Swiss Prot entry, in a KB Swiss Prot entry? We can find information about the sequence that has been expertly checked and verified, information about the, the sequence feature of the protein, such as the domain, the transmembrane region, etc. Contains a lot of information about its function, subcellular location, um, interaction, uh, expression, and so on. And we have attached specific importance to all events that affect the sequence of the protein and that cannot be predicted by some by tools, such as the post-translational modifications or the retina editing event. Okay. During the presentation, I will first describe the expectoration procedures by, by giving an example, a, a use case, and then I will discuss the sustainability of biocuration and expert biocuration in the, in the, in the time of uh, big data. So, to start, I will first uh, describe uh, an annotation of a protein, the spastin, so, just to give some background about the spastin, the, the spastin is a ATP-dependent microtubule severing enzyme that cleaves uh, the, the alpha and beta tubulin, and it thereby plays a key role in all cytoskeleton uh, events and in regulation of the cytoskeleton. As a consequence, it plays a role in different steps like the abscission uh, step in cytokinesis or the nuclear envelope reassembly during anaphase in co cooperation with the escort tree complex. Two major isoforms exist for uh, spastin, which differ by the presence of a hydrophobic and terminal uh, sequence. The spastin also play an important role in the, in the neural uh, development and especially in the axon growth and the formation of axonal branches. And mutations in the genes encoding spastin are associated with a, uh, with a major neurogen, uh, den, uh, sorry, neurodegenerative disease termed hereditary spastic paraplegia. And uh, these diseases uh, which we call HSP, cause pro progressive spasticity and weakness of the legs, leading to paraplegia. Okay, while the role of spastin as a tubulin severing enzyme is known for many years, we only start to understand how this process is regulated. And last, uh, two months ago, a very interesting paper was published about the, the, the process that will activate the severing activity of the spastin. 
These reports show that spastins specifically act on microtubules that are polyglutamylated. Polyglutamylation is a post-translational modification, PTM, in which glutamate side chains are formed on the target proteins, and the length of the glutamate chains can vary. What is very interesting in this case is that the, the polyglutamination acts as a real stat, and that severing activity by the spastin increase as the number of glutamate chains per tubulin uh, rise from 1 to 8, but then beyond this threshold, then the, the severing activity decreases. What is very interesting in this case is that polyglutamination of tubulin alpha and beta tubulins is known for more than 20 years. The enzyme that mediate the polyglutamylation and remove the polyglutamylation are also known for more than, more than 10 years. But we didn't know until now what was the precise role of polyglutamylation, and we learn only start now to understand its role in the regulation of the, the cytoskeleton. So, just to summarize, the spastin is a tubulin severing enzyme. It is associated with a neurodegenerative disease, the hereditary spastic paraplegia. It specifically acts on microtubules that are decorated with the polyglutamate tails. And the tubulin polyglutamylation acts as a rheostat. Then the next step is how to summarize and represent this information in unit prot KB Swiss protein tree. So, this is a snapshot of the spastin entry in human. As you can see, there is a lot of information. So, the curator read, extract, and synthesize all the information to give a summary of the function of the protein function on catalytic activity, uh, substrate allocation, and all these. Every annotation field is evidence to give the source of information. And the source, every source is associated with an evidence code to give which, uh, for, to, to indicate which uh, evidence uh, exists uh, for, for this um, for, for this evidence. In this case, it is based on the, some experiment, but it can be based by similarity or by a prediction program. In the future, we would like to add more granularity to the, to the evidence and for the moment, and add the evidence at the end of sentence to give more, um, more precision to the annotation and for uh, more usability and more traceability that user can really trace from which article is coming some information. For the moment, we, try, we, we keep a um, trace of this information by adding some PubMed, PubMed identifier at the end of sentences, but this will be replaced by real evidence tags uh, in the future. This is a, a case of uh, free text annotation. Uh, ten years ago, most information in Swiss protein trees were presented as free text. But free text information is not sufficient for a number of users. And it cannot be read by a machine. And it is more, much more difficult to retrieve information from this. So we are more and more moving to some structured uh, information. And more and more annotation fields contain structured uh, Info, uh, annotation. And for example, the function annotation is also present in the structure format. Um, Swiss Pro, uh, Unique Prod KB Swiss Prod is part of the Go consortium and manual creation of Go terms based on uh, experiments is part of the curation process, which means that when Swiss Prod curators read and curate an article, they curate in SwissProt and in the Go database in order to, to have both uh, informations. And over the years, UniProt has become by far the largest contributor of the Go consortium. You can, as you can see from this uh, snapshot taken from the, the, the Go um, website, from the statistic page on the Go website. 
We also display uh, sequence features for the protein. And in this case, I mentioned that the, the N terminus of the protein contains an hydrophobic uh, region. Uh, this is an interesting case because this is predicted to form a transmembrane region, but it doesn't form a transmembrane because, in fact, it forms an intramembrane herp uh, herpin loop buried into the brown grain, but which doesn't cross it. And we have a specific annotation uh, field intramembrane to describe uh, this case. The sequence features uh, correspond pretty well to what is uh, uh, shown in articles. So if you look uh, in, in the upper part of the slide to, to uh, a figure taken from a review article, you can say that the region described in this figure are well represented in the entry. So the intramembrane region at the end terminus, the mid domain, the microtubule uh, binding region, or the ATPase region, which is uh, required for uh, the microtubule severing. We also go for more precision for information. And more and more articles now are describing some functions that are either product specific or isoform specific. And when we have such information, we try to, to, to save this information in, in, in specific fields in order to, to allow the retrieval of this information. And in this case, I mentioned that uh, there are two major isoforms for the SPAS team, which differ by the presence of the N-terminus intramembrane. And the longest isoform, which contains the, the intramembrane region, uh, is specifically involved in the um, lipid metabolism, which is not the case of other isoforms, and localized to specific uh, subsar locations. We therefore indicate that in specific fields, while it is not the case for the other isoform. We have, we have of course, annotated the post-translational post modifications on the tubulins. So we describe the polyglutamylation and describe the role of the polyglutamylation on the, the severing of the tubulins. We also describe the other um, modification on tubulins because the tubulins are highly modified. For example, the, the in human, the, the alpha and beta tubulins are monoglycylated, which is interesting because in other organisms, in mouse or rat, they are polyglycylated. And in the human entry, we explain that it is monoglycylated, and we explain why it is not polyglycinylated because of the absence of an enzyme in human, which is present, uh, of an enzyme which is present in another organism. We also describe the, the acetylation of the, of the tubulins. Of course, when we know the positions of the modification, this is indicated. And every PTM is described in control vocabulary, establishing collaboration with the RESID database. And here you can see some, uh, the, some polyglot emulation of one residues. And this is quite interesting because we know that the C terminus of the tubulins are highly uh, polyglutamylated and many glutamate residues, but the precise position are not well known. And in the case for these tubulins, only one position is known. This is indicated. And as this position was proven in mouse, we give the source of information for the mouse entry, which has the experiments. We attach specific importance to uh, annotation completeness and uh, consistency. And when curating the spastin uh, enzyme and the, the tubulins, we check that the enzyme that mediate the polyglot emulation and mediate the, uh, remove the glut emulation were up to date. And we updated this enzyme when required. We also report the association with the um, genetic disease. So genetic disease are, uh, are described in a structure format, which is based on only nomenclature when available. And it contains cross-references to 
Omim and Meshtams. We also uh, report as publication that describe uh, the variation that affect uh, with the phenotype that affect the function of the protein. And in this case, we report many variants that are associated with the, the spastic paraplegia. And in Swiss prot, more than 30,000 variants are associated with a genetic disease. In this case, it's quite interesting to look at the, at the um, localization of variants that affect the proteins on the protein. And for this, you can use the um, feature viewer that brings together the protein sequence features in one compact view that is present for all uh, Uniprot KB Swiss protein trees. And if you look in this case for, for the spastin, you can see that the variants associated uh, with a disease that are highlighted in red in, the, in, the, in these figures, while the, the polymorphism are highlighted in, in green, you can see that most disease-causing variants are associated with the region responsible with, for the um, severing activity. And you can also see that two variants are associated with the hydrophobic region. When available, we also describe the effect on, of variants on protein function. As you can see in this example, uh, the, 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 the consequence of the, the variant is described in free text. As you can see here, free text can be quite difficult to pass. And for this reason, we decided to restructure this information into a structure and control uh, into a structure format using a combination of uh, control vocabulary. We, we use a co combination of vocabulary, vario, go terms, and then identify your, like the KB term or the Uniprot term. So in this case, for example, the sentence that describes that this uh, variation abrogates the binding to the tail of beta-3 tubulin can be summarized by using vario terms and Uniprot terms. Or the, the abolition of the microtubule serine activity can be summarized also by vario terms and go terms. Again, every Every uh, information is evidence with the source of information and uh, the, the evidence that supports this. Currently, more than 7,700 uh, variants are associated with functional characterization data in Swiss prod, and of which 4,100 have been standardized into control vocabulary. And we aim to, to finish the standardization and make the it uh, public for the users. Okay, now I describe the purely expert, expert and manual curation, and now I'd like to, do, to briefly describe uh, some uh, automatic annotation because the manual and automatic uh, annotation process are really tightly linked, and we try to use the information in Swiss protein trees to build rules and to build automatic annotation. And, and the same curators try uh, use this information to, 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 to make the best use of our resource. So uh, the spastin is a well, is a well uh, conserved enzyme, which is present in most metazoan. And it is characterized in a number of organisms, in human, mouse, but also in zebrafish, um, Drosophila or C. elegans. So we use this information to build a family profile and use the information in Swiss prod to produce a rule that generates some high quality automatic annotation in Tremble, the, um, the unreduced section of, uh, of Uniprod KB. The advantage of this system is that the spastic entries from the newly sequenced proteome that enter into the database will be automatically annotated. So this provides a way to automatically annotate the, 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 new, the new genome and new proteomes. Okay, so to summarize the part on the expert creation, 
procedure. So, curation of several papers according to the st standard Unip network flow generated. The complete free annotation of SPASTIN. Update of uh, the PTM's information in more than one uh, than 100 tubulin entries. The update of annotation of enzyme that mediate or remove the glutamylation modification. And the information on spastin has been used to generate a family rule, uh, an app rule, and to generate automatic annotation. A frequent comment that is made about concerning uh, expert curation is that it is time demanding and expensive. And this last year, the question of the sustainability of expert curation is has been frequently raised. And this question is extremely important in the context of exponential growth of the biomedical literature. Last year, more than one million paper were indexed in PubMed. When we compare these numbers to the 8,000 papers that we curate every year, we give the impression to be completely overwhelmed by the number of publications and, by, and that the expert and manual curation cannot keep up. However, this is quite misleading, and I will explain why. First, that we, the first thing is that we do not aim to curate all published paper, and we select a representative subset to provide a complete overview of the available information. Only publications that provide added value are added in Swiss plot entries. All publications are read in detail, the full text is read, and they are fully curated. If we take the example of the SPASTIN, and on 370 papers indexing PubMed for SPASTIN, only 94 have been used for annotation. 19 were new articles, and 75 were already present in the Swiss Press entries. Other 276 publications were either not relevant for annotation or presented weaker or redundant evidences. For example, this paper is describing a variant that is already present several times in, seven, uh, in the entry. We read this paper and then realized that it doesn't provide any additional information. So we decided not to create it. There are also a lot of reviews, review articles. This article was read. We like reviews because they are extremely useful to prioritize uh, publications. But we don't favor, we don't create them because we favor publication that report direct evidences. Again, this article was read but not selected. In fact, all these 276 publications, all these papers were evaluated. In some cases, evaluation took less than one minute because it was clear from the abstract that it's not curatable. And, but in the other case, we had to read the article, it took, and it took one hour. So the evaluation step took from one minute to one hour. And you can find all these other publications in the additional bibliography section of the Uniprot uh, uh, entry. The spasting example shows that we read and create much more paper than we integrate in Swissprot. However, the problem is that we have not tracked this information until now, and that we cannot quantify the total amount of literature that is evaluated every year. So the first question is, how many uh, articles do we evaluate every year? There is a second part of the question, is that the, there is a large part of literature index in PubMed that is not creatable and not relevant for annotation in Swissprot. For example, around 20% of articles indexed in PubMed are not in English. This is quite a high number. A lot of articles do not report scientific results. 
life science is huge with many fields like uh, ecology or uh, ethology and many articles and many articles are not dealing with any protein or gene uh, science and more surprisingly a number of paper are not related to life science at all and even if you look to molecular biology journals, a lot of articles in these journals are not curatable for Swiss prot, in the KB Swiss prot. If I take the issue of cell that published the, the paper about the poly polyglutamination, the same issue, many papers were not curatable, and more than half of these papers in these issues were not curatable. Which brings the second part of the question is which part of scientific literature is curatable? To answer these two questions, how many papers do we assess and which part of literature is curatable? We developed a collaboration uh, with the group of Ziyang Lu at NCBI. They um, developed the Potato tool, which is a, a text mining tool, and, and they, they they adapted the tool for uh, the Swiss prod curators, in prod KB Swiss prod curators. And this tool was adapted to assess the number of papers that we evaluate every year. The tool is pretty similar to PubMed. Query results are exactly the same as in PubMed. But one difference is that you can also access to the, to the abstract, as in PubMed, one difference is that a number of entities like protein or gene names, species names, or uh, chemical entities are highlighted, which facilitates the process of evaluation. And as I said before, the, the tool was adapted for the, the Uniport KB Swiss Prod curators, and in order to um, classify and, uh, these papers. So the paper that we that are curatable for SwissProt are tagged as curatable. Some paper are tagged as not priority. This is the case when the paper brings some information, additional information, but which is not outstanding and does not constitute a priority for SwissProt. And last but not least, there are the paper that are considered are not curatable. And in this case, we can also specify why the paper is considered as not curatable. In this case, this article is in Chinese and it's considered as autoscope. We have got two different, two different approaches to assess the, the, to the, the literature triage. The, for the first one, in the first approach, four curators from different annotation programs are running the test uh, over a six, eight month period. During this period, this curator continue to select and create publication as they currently do. The only difference is that they use PubTator instead of PubMed to select publications. And that they keep trace of all evaluation of paper. They tag all the curatable papers and the non-curatable papers and describe why these papers are not curatable. So, this, uh, this test started uh, three months ago, and during these three months, the curator um, curated and evaluated a high number of protein and a very high number of paper. And in three months, more than 2,300 articles in Dexing Pubmed have been evaluated. Here are the preliminary, preliminary uh, conclusions about uh, this uh, uh, curation workflow. We, we can see that um, 2,300 paper, only 27% of them are curatable, of which 43% are already in Swiss prod, which means that only 15% of these uh, 2,300 papers are curatable and newly paper curatable. 
A high proportion of articles are out of scope for different reasons, because they are not uh, written in English or because they, they, are, um, they de describe the protein as a marker or because they describe the, the regulation um, the, the, at the, the DNA level and so on. A pretty high number, 10% of articles concern some reviews. In fact, many articles are reviews or comments. And 10% of articles report some redundant information. This number is especially high for human, for the, the paper dealing with the genetic disease, because the, um, in this case, there are many studies in different populations. This analysis is very useful, but does not give any information uh, about the, the proportion of PubMed that is curatable. This is because for the, uh, the, the, the curation workflow I described, we use the gene and protein names to, to select the publications. And in fact, many um, articles do not cite gene or protein names in the abstract. So to try to assess the number of um, paper that are uh, curatable in PubMed, we selected 13 journals, high impact journals, that we frequently, very frequently curate in Swiss Pratt. For these 13 journals, we specifically look, we look at the table of content every week and we determine, we tag all these papers seeing whether they are curatable or not curatable. Again, when they are not curatable, we classify them into categories. This tool is also extremely useful to prioritize and to identify uh, publication for prioritization and then uh, curatable publications are distributed to the curators. So, in three months, more than 2,700 papers have been evaluated and here but, uh, only 13% of paper are considered as curatable, which is quite surprising when you see the list of journals that is, because these are really molecular, molecular biology journals that, that contain a lot of information about proteins. And a very, very high number of, of papers are out of school. One, uh, there are different reasons for that. Uh, one of them is that, um, Many articles describe some biological process that are not dealing, that do not deal with the protein of the genes. And for example, this year, hundreds of articles were published about the Zika virus, virus outbreak, but only one paper was describing the, the, the proteins. All others were describing the outbreak and the, the, the consequence in human. There are also many, um, PubMed is indexing also every error term and every correction of article. And we, there are also um, many articles about the protein engineering of the, of the technology and so on. And in nature and science that are general uh, journals, many articles are also indexed that describe some politi uh, uh, the article about the, some politics, some um, uh, environmental science, ecology, and, and so on. Okay, so what can we conclude for, from this uh, literature triage activity? The first thing is that while an increase in the number of publications is observed, the relevance for Uniprot is very heterogeneous. And as was shown here, a lot of publications are out of scope of Uniprot or do not present uh, much added value. A growing problem also is that is the number of publications that report some weaker evidences. Because now many papers uh, with new technology publish, publish list of candidates without giving some detailed information about the protein or the gene. And uh, this is not some information that we want to capture in, in SwissProd because we want to capture only gold standard knowledge on which we can rely on. So, 
it also means that the major challenge in the in expert creation is currently the literature triage step. And that the major task of curators is to identify and detect publication that, it, that will provide real added value for the, the users. And also that it's important to calculate the number of publications, but it's more important to select the appropriate publications. By using the data tool, the text mining tool, we also showed that we can both identify and prioritize publication for, prior, for curation and estimate the total number of publications that uh, we evaluate. And it also shows that um, it's quite paradoxical, but with the increase of the number of publications, expert creation is now more needed than ever in order to sort the to sort the, the, the wheat from the chaff and only provide the gold standard information for curator. And for this, we really need a mix of expert creation and good text mining tools in order to provide this. And last but not least, it showed that we fully curate 8,000 publications per year which we definitely read and evaluate a much higher number of paper. And if I separate the numbers, the preliminary, preliminary numbers, to the whole Swiss pro, uh, group of Swiss pro curators, we estimate that we evaluate between 50 and 70,000 papers a year, which is a much higher number. Okay, to finish, I would like to thank the Unicrat teams at SIB, EBI, and PIR. Unicrat is funded by a number of funding agencies, more especially the Swiss federal government, the National Institute of Health, and EMBL. And I thank you for your, for your attention.